Alrighty, what is up everybody? We are going to go ahead and look at Lesson 7.3 today. Some pretty fun stuff we're going to talk about, okay? Now, so far, you guys, everything we've done is called indefinite integrals. These are all examples of indefinite integrals. The reason that we'll look at this one, for example, is an indefinite integral is that we just have this integral symbol, okay? It's an indefinite integral. We're going to get a formula or an equation for what the integral is. What we're going to do today is we're going to put numbers here and here, and that calls this a definite integral, okay? So let's go check out this definition real quick here, all right? A definite integral is written with what's called upper and lower limits attached to an expression. So there's a little number there and a little number there. We still have the integral in the dx. It's thought of as a signed area. Now, I'm going to be confusing you. like, what the heck is a signed area? It's either a positive area or a negative area. From the lower limit, usually the left, to the upper limit, usually the right, it could be positive, negative, or zero. Here we go. Let me give you an example. The limit, or, or sorry, sorry, the integral from negative one to three of x squared is whatever the area of that and that are. Guys, that is a positive area, okay? Let's say I were doing something like the integral from here to here. This is a negative area because it's like below the axis. And then here's an example of, so I was doing like a cubic or something like that. And I was doing the integral from like negative two to positive two. This is a zero because the positive and the negative cancel each other out. Okay, so that's kind of what we, t I think we talked about that a little bit in class, but that's kind of what you guys want to know. Um, okay, da -da -da -da. unlike the previous integration process produces an antiderivative, it produces a, like a whole equation answer with the plus C and everything. A definite integral is a number value. There's an answer, a specific answer. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to do these with a calculator. Okay, this is definitely a skill you're going to need to know for the AP test. So I want you guys to get your TI-84 calculators, or hopefully you have it with you. If not, at least just watch this. And either in the calculate or in the math menu, we do this. Okay, I will show you. Here we go. Let's start with the calculate menu. All right, the calculate menu we use from when we already have a graph. So let's go ahead and let's type this in, okay? My equation was x to the third minus 6x, all right? x to the third minus 6x. Let's go ahead and graph that. Oh, gosh, I didn't look that I definitely did that wrong. Hold on. Hold, please. I did not come down. x to the third minus 6x, my goodness. And let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, let me just hit, hit, hit that with a zoom six so I can look at it nice. There we go. This is asking me for the integral from negative three to three. So what it's saying is the area between the curve and the axis from negative three, sorry, negative three to one. Okay, here's how you do it. Second calculate, integral, that's number seven, and the lower limit was negative three, enter, and the upper limit was one, enter. Ooh, look how fancy, you guys. It colors it in for you, and it tells me that the integral is 4. So I can go ahead and write down, for example, one that my integral is 4. Okay? Uh, let's go and look at another one. I'm going to put it in red so I can have a different color because it's fun, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off that one by pushing Enter there, and I'm going to put this one. Um, oh, shoot, it's the exact same question. Okay, then let's go ahead and... You have to like either clear it out or push clear draw or something like that. Okay, x to the third minus six x. Let's go ahead and graph that, right? And this time I'm gonna calculate, so it goes second and then I'm right here, you guys. Calculate the integral from negative square root six, which enter, to square root six. 
and I push enter. Look at that. Okay, it tells me what my bounds of integration were and it tells me the integral is zero. Does that make sense why that would be zero? Because we have it going from, you know, negative root six to root six, they cancel each other out. Okay, now this last one, this is actually a pretty cool problem. You guys, I, I want this same thing, but I want it in absolute values. If you don't remember where that is, there's a couple places to find it, but it's under one of the uh, secret menu buttons here. If we go alpha y equals, nope, it's not that one, alpha window, alpha window, there's my absolute value. Okay, and it's x to the third minus 6x, right? Now you guys, we've been looking at x to the third minus 6x, we've been looking at that graph, but now check it out when I put an absolute value on it. That's <laughs> a fun graph, I love that. And now we're integrating that, calculate the integral from negative five, enter to five, enter. Group. That's very cool. So that one is 198.501, okay? So calculator questions are specifically designed to be done on the calculator and do not do any work at all. Do not try to integrate them if it's a calculator question, okay? Um, okay, so that's the calculate menu. It says the math menu only provides the value, but that's usually all we need. It gives a more accurate answer. Basically, we're not gonna be able to see the gra graph, but that's okay. All right, and we're gonna in recommend that for all problems from now on. Um, don't worry about this F int thing. We have, we have equations, so okay. So let's look at number four, let's go back. And on my calculator, I'm gonna go to the home screen. All right, this is the home screen. Instead of having to draw the graph and draw it and stuff like that, you guys, math nine. So math eight is derivative, math nine is integral. If you wanna make yourself a note, that's the big like integral button that we're gonna use most of the time is math nine. So I'm gonna say, well, just put it in math nine, just put it in math nine, okay? So for, for number four, so let's put this in math nine um, on my, oh, whoops, let's see here, on here, okay. So I go math nine, and you guys, it sets up this cool little thing for you. It's like, okay, amazing. So I go negative five, I arrow up there, I hit five, and then I go absolute value, which is under alpha window, absolute value x to the third minus six x. Then you arrow over and you put dx. Not there, sorry. You arrow over and you put dx. Okay, and this is 198.5000. All right, I'm just gonna round it two decimal places. So I don't know if you guys noticed the same question. We got slight, like off by on the hundred, on the ten hundred thousandth decimal place, but we're basically the same thing. Okay, um, if you have a TI-83 that you're using, you need to talk to me because there's a little bit of a different syntax. I don't think any of you do, so I think we're okay. All right? Okay, so check it out, guys. Now, without using a calculator, it says use the idea of signed area to do this, this interval. Okay. You're not really going to have to do this without a calculator, but let me just show this to you, all right? Okay, you guys, this is a, um, let's see, this is a graph of an absolute value. At zero, it's at one. That's negative one, one, sorry. Zero, it's at one. At one, it's at one. At two, it's at three. And at three, it's at five. If I were to solve this, you guys, real quick, like two X minus one, is a half, that's where it hits the axis, right here. And so this is the graph of it, okay? All right, it looks a little bit weird, but there you go. So this is the integral from zero to three. Now look, from zero to three, do you guys see that this integral right here is simply just two little triangles, okay? So if I didn't have a calculator, I could still figure this out by using two little triangles. Now, my triangle on the left, it has a base of a half and a height of one. 
So one half base times height is one fourth. That's the area of that little guy right there, okay? The area on this side, it has a base of two and a half and a height of five. So it's one half base, two and a half is five halves times height. So it's that area is 25 over four. They are both positive areas because they're both above the axis. So that's a positive area and that's a positive area. So together, this area is 26 fourths or 13 halves or 6.5, okay? Should we check on the calculator and see if we were right? So like, um, so like from here, if I just went math nine and we were doing the integral from zero to three of the absolute value of two X minus one, dx, okay, and I get 16.5. Now, you guys, it's not going to be totally accurate. This is 16.50000 or 6.5. It is actually 6.5. It's 6.5, and if I turn that into a fraction, okay, it's 13 over 2. The calculator settings sometimes don't make it be like super, super accurate uh, when doing integrals, all right? Uh, cool, all right. So this one says, set up a definite integral which could be used to find the area of the region that's shaded. So this is what's shaded here, okay? All right, and if I were setting that up, it goes from zero to two. You read a graph the same way that you read a sentence, left to right, okay? Zero to two, it's uh, the equation two x squared minus three x plus two dx, okay? And then that's it. And it said to just set it up, so that's fine. That's set up right there. All right. Um, we could then put that in our calculator, find the actual areas and stuff. Okay? Okay, cool. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. The fundamental theorem of calculus, my friends. This is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. There are two. We're going to learn one later. Here we go. Okay, let's say this is f prime of x, and it looks like it's up here at three, right? I want the integral from zero to five of f prime of x, okay? Well, what does this mean? This means the area under the curve, in this case, the curve is a line, from zero to five. Well, guys, that is a rectangle, right? You don't know that the base of that rectangle is five, and the height of that rectangle is three, and so the area is going to be 15. Okay? That's just write an equation for F prime. Well, you guys, look. F prime, it's a constant. It's a straight line at 3. Find F of X. So I need to take the integral of that. Right? So if F prime is 3, the integral f of x is 3x plus a constant, okay? And it says if it's uh, f of 1 equals 4. So let's go ahead and figure out what my constant is going to be, okay? So this says when it's 1, c equals uh, 1, okay? So what's f of x? Let me go ahead and write it here. f of x is 3x plus 1. Now it's saying find f of five minus f of zero. Okay, I have this equation over here. This is what I'm using, all right? f of five is three times five plus one, which is 16. f of zero is three times zero plus one, which is one. And 16 minus one is 15, the same area that I got for here. All right, the area is 15. Okay, let's do another, a uh, couple other example problems and I'll actually show you the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is really, really straightforward, okay? Okay, let's see here. Find the integral from negative two to one. Now this is made up of two triangles. You guys see the two triangles? Let me go ahead and do this triangle first. 
That triangle on the left is one half, the base is one, the height of the triangle is two, so that's an area of one, and because it's a below the axis, it's a negative one. All right, over here, I've got a triangle. The area of this triangle is one half, the base is two, the height is four. So that equals four and it's above the axis, so it's positive. So the integral, okay, is three. So the reason is because up here is positive four and up here is negative one. Those cancel out, those give me three. Okay, now we're gonna write an equation and we're gonna integrate it, we're gonna do all this stuff by hand, all right? Uh, let's see here, this is a line. This is a line with a slope of two. So it's uh, a slope of two and a y-intercept of two. Guys, that's the line y is two x plus two. Let's go ahead and integrate that. Okay, uh, if I integrate this, this is x squared over two and then that's two x. So I have, 2x squared over 2, that cancels out, plus 2x plus a constant. Let's figure out what the constant is. Okay, it gave me some information to find it. It says when I plug in 1, I should get 0. 3 plus c is 0, c is negative 3. So my equation is x squared plus 2x minus 3. That's my equation. Okay, now it wants me to find f of 1, f of negative 2, and subtract them. Okay, if I plug in 1 right here, I get 1 plus 2 minus 3. I get 0. Now if I plug in negative 2 right here, I get 4 minus 4 minus 3. And so in order to find f of 1 minus f of 2, I get 0 minus negative 3, and I get 3. Again, the same answer that we got up there. All right. Hopefully you're kind of starting to see how it works. Um, we'll do another one. Hang on. All right. Now, this time, you guys, we have a position equation. Um, we'll come back. Well, should we do displacement right now? We'll come back to that, honestly. The velocity, if I take the derivative of this, okay, the velocity is going to be negative t to the first plus 4. All right? And it wants me to draw that. So that goes through 4, and it has a negative slope. This is the velocity equation, right? That's telling me what's the velocity from 1 to 4. Well, if you guys look, okay, the integral of the velocity is the area under the curve from 1 to 4, which happens to be a triangle. All right, the base of this triangle is 3. The height of this triangle is 3. It's 1 half base times height, so it's 9 halves. All right? Now, let's go find the displacement real quick. We said displacement is where we find the velocity and where it changes direction. At time four, it changes direction, which means between time one and four, it's not changing direction. Okay, so it's just going in one place. So the displacement is going to basically be x of four minus x of one. And I'm just going to do this real quick in my head, you guys, for sake of time. 16 negative a half, uh, x squared, it's negative 8. The so 16 is 8 minus 3 is 5. And x of 1 is, is uh, 1 half. And 5, which is 10 halves, minus 1 half is 9 halves. And so it's showing you that for each of these answers, part 1 and d are the same. Okay, this is going to bring up the first fundamental theorem of calculus. You probably saw it. So basically, here's how it works. If I am taking an integral, as long as the function is continuous, an integral of the derivative, I get the function, so I go backwards, and then evaluated from b to a, we write this little line, it says evaluated from, and then we always do top 
minus bottom. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's always solve these things without a calculator. Okay, so here we go. Very first question. For right now, we're going to go ahead and ignore the 0 and the 4. We're going to go ahead and integrate this. Now, you guys remember that that's a 1 half, right? So I have, if I add 1, y to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. Okay, plus y plus c. All right, y'all, sorry about that. I've had to stop and start and stop and start so many times. I'm so sorry, but... Now, hopefully nobody's around and I can just do this. Okay, so anyway, um, we're going to, yes, yeah, so we integrated this three, three halves, two thirds, so y plus c, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and leave this in here right now, but we're going to come back and talk about that in just a second, okay? Okay, um, so let's go ahead and say that that's uh, four thirds y to the three halves plus one y plus c, and I'm evaluating that, and so you write this line, evaluated from, and then a four on the top, a zero on the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, basically, now that I got this function, I'm gonna do f of four minus f of zero, I mean I'm gonna plug in four, and then I'm gonna plug in zero, okay? Now when I plug in four, I actually have to plug it in uh, here and here, I kind of like to do it like this. Okay, so let's say I plug in f of 4. So I get 4 thirds times. Now, you guys, let's do this off to the side real quick. 4 to the 3 halves is equivalent to saying the square root of 4 to the 3rd is equivalent to saying 2 to the 3rd is equivalent to saying 8. So that's 8. Okay, plus 4 plus c. And when I plug in 0, I get 0 plus 0 plus c. All right? Now, 4 thirds of 8 is 32 thirds. 4, I'm going to just go ahead and call that 12 thirds. And so here's what I get. 44 thirds. And then, you guys, you notice this? Plus C minus C. Well, does it make sense that no matter what this constant is, let's say it was like a 10 or something like that, right? If I had like... 10 right here. This one would be plus 10. This one would be plus 10. But when I subtract, it would go away. So what I'm going to tell you is that now when we start doing definite integrals, in other words, we're evaluating now, there is no more plus C. There's just no more. We don't need it anymore because when we evaluate it, that C would go away anyways. Okay? So I got... 44 thirds, you get an actual number. Now, as you guys are doing this, you can absolutely check your own answers, right? And it gives you a great way to do this on the calculator. So it says without using a calculator, but you'll still get practice, right? So if I go, okay, so it's two square root y plus one. So if I just go math nine, and it was zero to four, and it was two square root y, that says squared, my bad. 2 square root y plus 1. Now, I'm using an x because it doesn't matter. It's just a variable. Okay? And I get that. And now, if I try to turn that into a fraction right now, it might not work. But look, 44 thirds. Let's go. All right? So you can see that I'm, like, doing it right here. Okay? Okay. Great. Here's my next one. All right. Oh my goodness, you guys. Guess what kind of a question this is? This is a U substitution question, right? This is a U sub. Or you can do like a reverse chain rule. I'm going to do a U sub. I don't want to mix anybody up here. Do one? Yeah, let's do a U sub. Okay. So U is 4T plus 1. So DU is 4DT. 4, 1 fourth. Now this is U to the fifth DU. Now, notice right now, you guys, I am not putting my numbers right here because these numbers are no longer accurate. Those are T numbers. I'm now in terms of U, so I'm kind of going to drop them for a minute. I don't want you guys to worry too much about that just yet. Okay, so this is going to give me 1 fourth U to the 6 over 6, which is 1 24th 
u to the sixth and u is 4t plus one plus c, right? But now instead of plus c, we're evaluating one to zero. And so now what I'm gonna do is plug in one. Four plus one is five, five to the sixth, one twenty-fourth of that. That's fun, I have no clue what that is. And then plug in zero minus one over 24, right? Okay, uh, let's five to the sixth. Let's just see here. So I can see if I get a lovely answer. 15,625, okay? So it's uh, 15,625 minus one, which is 15,624 divided by four is 39.06. Once I simplify all that, okay? So let's see if I did this right. So it was, my original problem was the integral from zero to one of four t plus one to the fifth. So parentheses, four x plus one to the fifth dx. Well, shoot. Six over six. Okay, let's go back and see what I did wrong, shall we? All right, I obviously made a mistake, guys. I'm not gonna re-record it. Let's just go see what I did. Okay, uh, u is 4t plus one, du is 40t, four one fourth. 4 u to 50 u, 4 u to 6 over 6. So that's 1 24th u to the 6, 0 and 1. So it's 5 26 over 24, 1 over 24. All right, let me see why did I feel like I did this right. Hold on one second. Super strange, you guys. I don't know what I did. I just made a mistake in simplifying because when I subtract that and I get 15, 6, 24 over 24, I get 6, 51, which is what the calculator gave me. So I don't know. Oh, I divided by 4 instead of 24. If you caught that, let's go. I divided by 4 instead of 24. Okay. Whew. All right. Wow, that was stressful. All right, cool, cool. Let's do another one. Oh, this one looks a little crazy. Let's take a look at 12 and 13. Um, and then we might just start to talk about that tomorrow. Well, no, we'll see, we'll see. All right, you guys, this is definitely a U sub question. Now, I am gonna show you something kind of cool on this one, okay? All right, check it out. U is two X minus one du is 2 dx, so we need a 2 and a 1 half. Remember there's a square root 2 on the bottom, there's a du on the outside. Now here's the thing, okay? This is one of those more difficult ones because it has this extra x up here that I have to figure out what that is. Okay, that's no big deal, we'll just go from here. u is 2x minus 1, so u plus 1 is 2x, so x is, ooh, that's annoying, u plus 1 over 2, or I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 half right there, okay, because that's mm, annoying. All right, so that's what x is. So x is 1 half u plus 1. That 1 half is a bummer. You guys know what I'm going to do with it? Because fractions are allowed to go out from make my life easier, so it's one-fourth. Okay, now remember, when there's one term on the bottom, we split it up. u to the first over u to the one-half is u to the one-half. One over u to the one-half is u to the negative one-half. So this turns into one-fourth, okay? u to the three-halves, two-thirds. u to the one-half, two. And then at this point, we would typically, right, plug this back in and then evaluate it, but I'm gonna show you guys a different method that I like, all right? 
Now look, right here, this is important, okay? These numbers are X numbers. You guys see that? Because this is a DX. These are X numbers. X is one, X is five. I turned this to you. So when I'm evaluating these, I do not want to evaluate these at X numbers. I want to evaluate them at U numbers. So if I were trying to evaluate this, five to one, it would be incorrect. Those are X numbers, okay? Now, can we change X numbers to U numbers? Let's think about this real quick. What if I did that here, right? If, let's start with one. If X is one, can you guys tell me what U would be? U is gonna be two minus one, which would be one. Okay, cool. Now, if X is five, what would U be? Well, that would be uh, 10 minus one, which would be nine. And now I can do the whole problem with nine and one instead of trying to plug back in that X and like deal with really ridiculous stuff, okay? Okay, so what this says is I'm gonna do plug in the nine, plug in the one, I'm gonna do top minus bottom. There's just one fourth on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that bad boy on the outside. And then I'll do uh, nine and I'll do one. Okay, so for nine, let's see. It's two thirds. Now, um, geez, nine to the three halves is square root nine to the third, which is three to the third, which is 27, okay? Plus two, and then the square root of nine is three. Minus one to the three halves is one, and one to the one half is one, okay? Now, I'm actually not gonna get a common denominator yet, okay, guys? I'm not gonna get a common denominator yet because I think something, well actually, well here, here we go, here we go, check it out. Three goes into 27 nine times. So this gives me 18 plus six. So that gives me 24 minus two thirds minus two if I distribute that. I'm trying to do all this without a calculator. 24 minus two thirds. No, 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 24 minus two is 22 minus two thirds. Now you guys, frankly, if this was a free response question, and honestly, it's a little bit difficult, this one might actually be, I'm done right there. If it's a multiple choice question, I gotta keep going, which is annoying, but let's just see if we can do it. That's 66 over three, so that's 64 over three times one fourth. Uh, four goes into 64 16 times. So the final answer I get is 16 over three. Let's see if I'm right. Oh my goodness. I would regret if I didn't make a mistake on this one, all right guys? Okay, so the original problem was one, two, five, um, X over <coughs> the square root of two X minus one, all in the square root sign dx. And 16 over 3 is... Let's go! Alright, fabulous. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do this question real quick here. Okay. Guys, technically this is u substitution, but it's also the one that you can do it the fast way. You don't have to do u substitution. You could go like this, okay? The integral of cosine is sine. Now, if I were doing a chain rule, a derivative, I'd multiply by two. If I'm doing an integral, I divide by two. So this way, I don't have to actually change into u sub. I can just do it like that real quick, which means that these were x values and these are x values. So I actually don't even have to change my numbers. I can evaluate it from pi over two to zero, okay? Now, when I go to do top minus bottom, I'll go ahead and leave the one half out front. Top sine of two times pi over two minus bottom sine of zero. Well, I happen to know that the sine of pi is zero. The sine of zero is also zero, which tells me this integral is zero. Now, you guys think that's just like nothing? That's nothing right there? Well, let's take a look at why we get zero, okay? Uh, cosine 2x. Let's go ahead and go into the y because it's more fun. And I want to use red this time because I'm going to use red. Yep. Okay. Cosine 2x. Right. I'm going to go into a zoom trig on this bad boy so it'll look cool. There we go. 
And then I'm going to calculate the integral of this from 0 to pi over 2. And can you guys see that the integral is 0? And can you see why? Because it's got that areas canceling each other out. OK? All right, last thing, just so we cover this really quickly. I know I went over. I'm so very sorry, you guys. OK, but this is so incredibly important, and there's only two questions. OK, we're going to start plus accumulation. Like, somebody at this workshop was like, look, spam. Spar I think that's why they put method, so it spells spam instead of spa. Spam. Do you guys like spam? Let's talk about this in class tomorrow. I used to hate spam, but I love a good spam and rice and pineapple. Oh my gosh, you guys, the delicacy. All right, check it out. If the integral is f of b minus f of a, does it make sense that I could take this equation right here, I could add f of a to both sides, and I could get that f of b, because I just like solved for that, right? is f of a plus the integral. This is called start plus accumulation or change. This is going to be one of the biggest concepts on the, on the AP test, like one of the biggest concepts. So for example, we're going to talk about if air is being pumped into a room for air conditioning at a rate of blah, 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 and the room started out at 72 degrees, what is the room after five hours? And we're going to have to use an integral, right? The start would be 72 degrees. The integral would make the change, and then it would be the end. So start plus accumulation, OK? So an endpoint can found with a start plus a uh, definite integral, all right? This is so important, you guys. This is an extremely common AP calculus problem. That's true. So last two questions. Here we go. So sorry. This video is going to be 45 minutes. We'll be all right, though. We'll live. Here we go. Find start. Start plus accumulation. OK, so if I'm going 0 to 2, right, the starting point is f of 0. And then I'm adding the change from 0 to 2 of this. And that equals the ending point. Now, this is just slightly, slightly different than the fundamental theorem of calculus, which said that if I did the integral from 0 to 2, erase that plus real quick, I would get top minus bottom, right? And that's easy. But instead, I'm going to do this a little bit different way. And I'm going to say the starting point plus the accumulation equals the ending point. The starting point, f of 0, is 4, OK? Now, we're going to have to take this integral. This is, gonna, this is my work workspace here. And that's going to give me what f of 2 is. OK, let's take this uh, integral real quick. That's an easy integral, x to the third over 3 plus 3x evaluated from 2 to 0, top minus bottom. 2 to the third is 8. 2 times 3 is 6. 0 to the third is 0, 0. So this is 14 minus 0, so this is 14. So what my statement says is the starting value of 4 plus the change equals f of 2. So f of 2 is 18. Start plus accumulation. All right. Um, OK, let's do the same thing over here. Velocity question. This is perfect. It's saying, if the position at 1 is 8, what's the position at 2? Well, start plus the accumulation equals the final value. And we're integrating this bad boy. OK. I really hope it said we could use a calculator on this. I'm going to tell you right now you can use a calculator on this because we can't integrate that without the calculator. So this is going to be a calculator question, right? So the start is 8. The accumulation, I'm going to go ahead and get that off of my calculator, which will be, OK, so it's going to be, let's just do math 9 here. Math 9, the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 to the 3x squared minus 5 dx. OK, so my accumulation is 16.502. 
And so the idea is that if it started at 8 and it increased by 16.502, the ending position is 24.502. Okay? Start plus accumulation. Spam. Super duper important. Sweet. Hey, that was only 40 minutes. That's not too bad, you guys. Hopefully you're able to watch this tonight. Please, please watch this before tomorrow. You guys are the best.